when you honor the porcupine by taking his quills and turning them into something beautiful. They live on forever through our work. Each one of these quills I've handled many times before they ever go on a finished piece. I have sweat over these quills. They've stuck me, I've bled. So I get real connected with my pieces. My name is Eric Smith. I'm a Chickasaw bow maker and traditional artist. And today we're gonna to be discussing porcupine quill work. As a traditional artist, I never limit myself to just one medium. I like to work in many mediums and create many different things. I had the pleasure of working for the Bureau of Indian Education for many years, and I got to work with reservation students from across the United States from many tribes. Porcupine quill work was something that I had always been interested in, but I couldn't find anybody that knew how to do it. So I started experimenting. And just like beadwork, porcupine quill work utilizes many different techniques. So once you get one down, you know, you find another and then another and another. We see Porcupine quill work being done on the Great Plains. Porcupine quills adorned teepees, moccasins, bags. It was only found traditionally in North America, so it's uniquely Native American. One thing that I love about doing this is that our ancient people lived and walked every day in beauty. There's almost an intimacy between the things that you work with. When you go out and you harvest a deer and you turn that, his skin into a beautiful piece of buckskin, and you harvest his tendons so that you can sew with them. And I think that's the way our ancient people looked at things. There was never any waste. It brings honor to those animals. And I think that's a Chickasaw way. An average porcupine has around 40,000 quills on their body. Now these quills have to be harvested from the porcupine and then cleaned, sorted, and dyed. Now traditionally, the dyes would have been a plant-based dye and it was used in a setup called cold dyeing. This is where the plant dye was mixed with water. Quills were submerged into the dye and water mixture and allowed to sit for a extended period of time to absorb those natural dyes. Porcupine quills are very sharp and they can be very dangerous. It's a prey animal and this is their defense mechanism. So all these have a sharp barb on the end and this is basically nature's hypodermic needle. And even after they're removed from the animal, they can be very painful. So each quill that I work with, I have to trim them. And by trimming the barbs off the quills, this makes them very safe. In the past, ancient people would take these sinews, and these were the tendons of animals. This is elk, and this was broke down, and this was the thread of the past. I have got some quills that I've submerged in water. We have to soften them to get them pliable and flexible again. Now, traditionally, the quills would have been flattened in the mouth between the teeth. Uh, I don't want to do that, so I use my fingers and I flatten these quills out. I harvest all of my own porcupine quills myself. I dye them myself. This is going to be a knife sheath similar to the one pictured here. I've got this uh, piece of buckskin here, and I'm doing a row of zigzag quill work, and I've got two needles. And what I'm doing is I'm stitching these quills into place along my two lines. And then basically I'm going in and out of the buckskin, tacking quills as I go. And then once I've got a quill tacked down, I'm going to fold it over and then tack it down again with the other needle. Then I come back up through the buckskin and tack it down. Long ago, nobody had pockets, so bags of all types were utilized. This is a knife sheath that would hang around a person's neck. The bag here is a cinch type bag. And this would be used to carry a man's pipe, smoking equipment, something very relevant to our people. All Chickasaws come from a great long line of diverse artists. When we do these ancient skills and we do the things that our ancestors did, there's something down in our ancient DNA that just rises up and it's so powerful. There's a feeling of camaraderie. There's a feeling of the presence of people from the past that are right there with us. We have these experiences of creating and we create these things that were so relevant, not only today, but to our ancestors. And I think that shows that what we do is still relevant. It still is important and it needs to be passed on and shared. 